My name is Steve Warius, and welcome today to today's AVK Series 27 Fire Hydrant presentation. I'm the AVK Territory Manager for Oklahoma, Arkansas, and the Texas Panhandle, and I'm based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'd like to start with a quick history on AVK. We came to the U.S. in 1980s, and we currently have our ISO 9001 and 14001 manufacturing facility set up in Minden, Nevada. We also have two distribution warehouses, one in Nashville, Tennessee, and one in Omaha, Nebraska. This allows for distribution of in-stock products within 24 to 48 hours. So let's get started. First, I'm going to talk about the outside of the hydrant, then I'll move on to the inside. AVK began manufacturing the Series 27 dry barrel fire hydrants back in early 1990. We have two types of dry barrel fire hydrants. The first is our nostalgic 2780, which is the red style in the picture. And then we have our 2700 modern style, which is the yellow. In this picture, they both have a six inch standard and MJ shoe, have an inch and a half Pentagon operating nut, and the parts between the 2700 and the 2780 are interchangeable. All of our hydrants have a 10 year warranty. AVK fire hydrants are fully compliant with the AWWA standard C502 for dry barrel fire hydrants. AVK fire hydrants also exceed industry standards regarding flow characteristics and durability. Our hydrants are listed by Underwriters Laboratory, UL, and approved by Factory Mutual, FM. All AVK fire hydrants are certified to NSF 61 for health effects and NSF 372 for the low lead requirements. All of our hydrants have a 250 PSI operating pressure rating. They are also shell tested to 500 PSI and an additional shell test of 1000 PSI is done in order to meet UL requirements. The seat is also tested at twice the rating pressure as required by AWWA C502. Should it ever be required, we have completed proof of design testings available. We also have impact testing and flow testing information available to you as well. In this picture, you can see an AVK hydrant test site being built. The fusion bonded epoxy coating is on all of the above ground sections, both inside and out. It is also on the exterior and interior of the inlet shoe. The epoxy provides a smooth lining on the interior for lower head loss. The coating ensures protection and longevity of the ductile iron castings. The coating complies with AWWA standard C550, which covers protective interior coatings, and it also meets NSF 61 and NSF 372 requirements. In addition, all hydrants upper barrels have a polyurethane layer of paint. This is to provide the correct color as required by the customer and to provide another layer of corrosion protection. The weather shield sits on top of the hydrant. It protects the bronze operating nut from damage from non-standard wrenches. So if someone tries to operate a hydrant with a pipe wrench, it might damage the weather shield, but it won't damage the bronze operating nut. And in the unlikely event that the weather shield does get damaged, it's much easier and less expensive to replace that than the bronze operating nut. The AVK weather shield and nozzle caps can be manufactured in a variety of shapes and sizes to meet the needs of local specifications. In areas that require protection from tampering, we can also add locking mechanisms or a tamper-proof operating nut. This can be installed during the manufacturing process or later in the field. AVK fire hydrants are equipped with an external lubricating fitting, making it much easier to lubricate the hydrant. There's no disassembly required. The fitting is a grease zerk for grease or a threaded plug for oil-filled hydrants. The fitting is always located at the back of the hydrant for safety. Remember, always use food grade grease or oil. Never use non-food grade products as they could contaminate the water supply. 
Next is the AVK bonnet style nozzle. This nozzle is easy to install and remove. It's a simply rotate it 40 degrees counterclockwise to lock it in place. There are two set screws to prevent it from rotating out and help prevent nozzle movement. The bayonet lug feature makes the nozzle much easier to replace in the field. The design allows the lugs to only be inserted one way. However, it should be noted that sometimes the O-rings can be difficult to compress, so you may need a rubber mallet to tap on the nozzle to get it in place when you're installing it. At the ground level of the hydrant, AVK installs berry depth tags. This is so it is easy to determine the berry depth by looking at the base of the hydrant when it's installed. The tag here shows a berry depth of five feet. Our extension kits are also equipped with a berry depth tag depending on their length. So in this example, it shows a five foot original berry and a six inch extension kit, making the depth of berry five foot six inches. This is our brake flange or traffic coupling. It's designed to brake at less than one and a half miles an hour with a vehicle of at least 3,000 pounds or more. When the hydrant gets hit, this thin layer of metal breaks away and allows the hydrant to fall over, thus breaking the internal stem coupling. The new repair kit will fit either the 2700 or the 2780. Remember, all the parts are interchangeable between the hydrants. So when you get a traffic repair kit, it will come with a new flange, new coupling, new bolt, and a new snap ring. We recommend that you do not use any of the old parts, even though they may look okay. There could be some damage to those items that's not visible to the naked eye. Once all the old and damaged parts are removed, you can start to reassemble. First, you would slide the new flange over the barrel, making sure the flange says this side up. Install your snap ring, and that'll hold the flange in place. Next, install the new brake coupling, and finally, the upper nozzle section of the hydrant and tighten the four bolts on the brake flange. The only difference between the 2700 and 2780 is the 2700 has four bolts for the upper se nozzle section and the 2780 has six bolts. The lower barrel is ductile iron, which allows it to be strong and lightweight. The lower barrel has a standard bituminous coating but epoxy and polyurethane are options that are available. The lower barrel is also stenciled with a berry line, the depth of berry, and the op oh, excuse me, opening direction. In this example, we have a five foot berry open left hydrant that is stenciled with the 5.0 and the OL on the lower barrel. The berry line is obscured by the, the boards holding up the hydrant. At the base of the hydrant, there is a five bolt shoe. This design makes it easier to remove the main valve. It also makes the hydrant more resilient against low speed impacts. The last thing you want is that your hydrant breaks down at the shoe instead of the traffic coupling where it is designed to. The design requires five simple bolts and nuts that are 304 stainless steel with a Teflon coating to prevent galling as a standard. Finally, the five bolt design also provides lower head loss because the main valve ears can be used to direct the flow upward when the hydrant is operating. The hydrant shoe is also equipped with an anode lug. This allows easy attachment of a sacrificial anode if a water utility happens to use that for their cathodic corrosion protection. There is no need for welding, which can often damage the hydrant's coating. The anode lug can also be used for tracer wire connections. It will accept two number 10 wires. The shoe also comes with a flat plate on the back and bottom of the shoe to help installation of the hydrant be easier. The drains and drain ring are all bronze, corrosion resistant, and can be easily plugged if required. Drain ports are always located directly under the hose nozzles. Drain ports can be plugged internally or externally. We always recommend plugging them internally so that you can always unplug them in the future by removing the main valve and unplugging. So let's start looking more at the internal parts. 
All of our hydrants and our valves have a unique serial number. This unique number indicates the date of manufacture, testing results, the construction material, and shipping information. This is for full traceability to allow for the industry's quickest and most comprehensive customer service. The thrust nut and operating nut are cast bronze. The operating nut can be either open left or open right. The operating nut is manufactured with a ventilation shaft that works in conjunction with the Zerk fitting for ease of installation of lubrication and makes the op nut self lubricating. Oil or grease flows up with the threads and out the op nut vent hole side to recirculate. The op nut is also provided with an upper stainless steel needle bearing, and that's standard, and on top of an anti friction washer uh, on the bottom to ease operation. The op nut and thrust nut are also equipped with a series of O rings to isolate the lubrication chamber from the environment. The thrust nut is held in place by a stainless steel lock plate and screw. The plate is non-corrosive and it makes it easier to adjust the nut in case the nut is too tight or too loose. The lock plate offers 12 different positions on the op nut. This can help if your hydrant is experiencing chatter, if it's too loose, or hard to open and close, which means it's too tight. Next is the lubrication chamber. It holds the oil or grease to lubricate the operating mechanism for the hydrant. It's sealed with two O-rings on the bottom for redundancy and another O-ring at the top to prevent any moisture from getting inside. And remember, your grease or oil needs to be food grade quality. The travel stop nut is used to stop the stem from over traveling when operating the hydrant. The travel stop nut takes all the load at the top so that the main valve and stem are not damaged by having a compression load on them between the top and bottom of the hydrant. It is easily removed by using the enclosed end of our lightweight T-handle wrench in our AVK toolkit. Next is the barrel gasket. Three barrel gaskets are used in our dry barrel fire hydrant. All three have the same gap, all three are the same gasket, all three have the same part number. The first is used between the bonnet and the nozzle section on the 2780 nostalgic, nostalgic style, or the nozzle section and the upper barrel on the 2700 modern style. The second is between the nozzle section and the lower barrel, and the third is between the lower barrel and the inlet shoe. It's a simple part made out of NBR. It has a steel insert to hold its shape so that when you place it on the ceiling surface, it'll stay in place. You don't need to worry about rolling a gasket when moving the hydrant parts. This feature also makes it much easier for one person to reassemble a hydrant. All AVK upper stems are 304 stainless steel as a standard. AVK is chosen to provide stainless steel operating stems to eliminate the potential for corrosion on this vital part of the hydrant operating system. The AVK stainless steel upper stems also have the benefit of having a machine smooth surface to seal the O-rings to prevent water intrusion in the lubrication reservoir. The AVK stainless steel upper stems provide optimum corrosion protection. The hydrant wrench pin is also located on the upper stem. This enables removal of the main valve with a lightweight AVK T-handle wrench, which makes the hydrant much easier to maintain. No matter what the bury, the pin is always in the same place for ease of removal, making the AVK T-handle wrench the only one needed. Reminder from earlier that T-handle wrench also removes the stop nut, travel stop nut, from the bonnet using the other end of it. To further resist corrosion, AVK uses stainless steel brake couplings, extension couplings, and coupling pins on all of our dry barrel fire hydrants. The use of stainless steel assures a longer lifespan due to the more durable materials. <clears throat> the low profile design also helps improve the flow of the hydrant. 
The standard material for the lower stem is steel. However, for an additional cost, AVK also offers an optional stainless steel lower operating stem. The stainless steel lower stem will reduce corrosion effects from standing water within the lower barrel. Both upper and lower stems can be provided in 304 stainless steel. They can also be provided in 316 stainless steel for utilities or private industrial facilities that re experience very aggressive waters for their major source of fire protection. Located at the bottom of the hydrant is one of the most important features of the AVK hydrant, the one-piece main valve. Our main valve design eliminates a large number of parts which are used by our competitors to build their hydrants. This reduces parts inventory and also makes it much easier to replace. The main valve is a ductile iron core encapsulated in EPDM. EPDM is re resistant to chlorine and other disinfectants, so it will have a long life. The main valve is a very durable component with a very good memory. It has a shore hardness of rubber of 85, so that if there is a rock embedded in the hydrant, all you have to do is open it up, blow off some water for a, a bit for the pop, rock to pop out, and then allow the main valve to regain its shape. It's very durable and long lasting. The, a, the AVK main valve has a 25 year warranty. Another great feature of AVK fire hydrants is that they have the low parts count, as we noted with the main valve assembly. A low part count means it takes fewer parts to manufacture an AVK Series 27 fire hydrant than it does our competitors. Why is this important? A low parts count is benefit is a benefit to our customers because they can maintain a lower parts inventory and they need far less space for our parts and storage. In addition, all the AVK hydrants have interchangeable parts and any new modifications are designed to retrofit previous versions of the Series 27. This assures AVK always has the parts our customers need, which expedites parts delivery and any confusion when parts are ordered. AVK also simplifies the inspection, maintenance, and repair of our products by providing a lightweight toolkit. The toolkit includes our operating wrench, which can be used to remove the operating nut, hydrant thrust nut, and caps. Our innovative T-head wrench, where one end is used to remove the travel stop nut, located in the lubrication chamber, the other end is used to remove the stem and seat using the pin located on the upper stem. There is also our centering tool. The centering tool is used to re reduce side to side movement when working on the components. The product range of the Series 27 fire hydrant is quite broad. Let's start with a list of nozzle configurations that are available. Keep in mind that not all configurations are available on both the 2780 and the 2700. It's also important to remember that some nozzle configurations, such as a single pumper configuration, may not be recognized by UL or FM. So on the 2780 Nostalgic, it can be configured with the th three standard outlets, two hose outlets, or two pumper outlets, or just a single pumper outlet. The 2700 Modern can be configured with three outlets or two pumper outlets or a single pumper outlet. There is also an Alpine style for snowy environments, so you can have the hydrant above the snow level. The 2700 Modern can also be configured as a monitor hydrant for fire protection. And also remember that the parts between the 2700 and 2780 are interchangeable. The main valves, gaskets, op nuts, nozzles, and caps. We also provide a wide range of accessories. Our extension kits come from 6 inches to 60 inches in 6 inch increments and also can be done to custom lengths. Mm -hmm. The traffic repair kit is available in case your hydrant is knocked over. 
tamper guards to lock the hydrant and prevent author unauthorized operation, and our hydrant check valve to prevent possible contamination or cross connection of the water distribution system. AVK provides a wide range of end connections to connect the hydrant to the water distribution system. For four inch, we have an MJ connection, flange, HDPE, and an ISO flange connection. Six inch, we do MJ, flange, a push on joint, the HDPE. We also have a straight inlet, an ISO flange, and we also do a high max connection for a restrained joint. On the eight inch inlet, we can only do the MJ connection. And one of our newest and most innovative connections for our hydrant is that high max connection. There's many situations that hydrants may require additional restraining power and our high max coupling can help provide that. Let's take a look at the details of the high max. The end ring casing is ductile iron for connections four inch and larger, cast steel for two and three inch end connections. The nuts and bolts are 304 stainless steel with an anti-galling zinc coating called molecular anti-galling. The spherical spacer is 304 stainless steel. The gasket is an EPDM rubber as standard, but NBR is an option. The grip chain is 420 stainless steel for four inch and larger grip rings. Three inch and smaller use 440 stainless steel. The bridge, which spans the opening of the high max grip when not in fully tightened, is 304 stainless steel, and the coating is a fusion bonded epoxy. The high max grip end meets or exceeds all requirements of AWWA C219, the standard for bolted sleeveless sleeve type couplings for plain end pipe. The AVK products that are supplied with the HIMAX grip end connections comply with their respective AWWA standards. Gate valves comply with C515, fire hydrants comply with C502, and the fusion bonded coating complies with C550. The HIMAX end connections are certified NSF61 and NSF372 as they are the products they are mounted to. The high max grip end connection carries a three year limited warranty. Now you can see that the options for an AVK fire hydrant are almost limitless. We can make the body, bonnet, caps, any color or combination of colors that the water utility may require. We can supply different types of nozzles and nozzle threads, as well as stores connections. We can supply a four, four and a half or five inch stores connection or a four, four and a half inch threaded connection for the pumper. The operating nuts can come in squares, triangles, pentagons, or they, be, they can be custom made. The lower stems can be stainless steel or steel. Bolting can be zinc 304 or 316 stainless steel, 304 is our standard. Drains can be plugged or unplugged. The hydrants can be open left or open right. The shoe connections and the sizes. With so many different options, we recommend the use of the AVK Hydrant Specification Worksheet. You and your customer can fill the sheet out together, and this ensures the customer gets exactly what they want. So in conclusion, AVK Fire Hydrants are fully compliant with all the standards, AWWA C502, UL, FM, NSF61, NSF372. We have a unique serial number for full traceability. We have a low parts count, which means lower parts inventory. All mod modifications are designed to retrofit. We offer a 10 year warranty on the fire hydrant, a 25 year warranty on the one piece main valve, and a three year warranty on the high max coupling. I'd also like to mention that you can always visit our website, AmericanAVK.com, for more information on our products. You can download data sheets and brochures, watch installation and maintenance videos, and we also have an online training program that you can use. 